EA Sports dropped a ton of information about Madden 23 yesterday, and today what we're going to be going over is a complete breakdown of the new Field Sense gameplay system. We're going to look on their site and we're going to read over this in-depth article that breaks down the new tackling, passing, and other systems that go along with gameplay for Madden 23. I'll also be adding a few of my own opinions throughout the video because I have been playing the beta, so I've got to experience all of this firsthand. And speaking of the beta, I should have some codes to give away later today, so my social media accounts are up on the screen if you want to follow me there for a chance to play early. So what is Field Sense? Field Sense is the foundation for consistent ultra realistic gameplay that gives you more control at every position and affects every game mode in Madden 23. Fueled by new physics informed animation and animation branching technology, Field Sense makes gameplay more authentic by bringing more variety and realistic physics driven outcomes. Field Sense comes to life in Madden 23 in four major ways through the new control mechanics that we're calling hit everything, skill based passing, 360 cuts and wide receiver versus DB battles. We're starting on the defensive side of things with hit everything. We have heard from you that at times tackles and collisions between players and Madden NFL gameplay felt predetermined leading to immersion breaking moments and lack of total control. We built hit everything with the focus of alleviating those feelings. Hit everything is comprised of six components that offer emergent gameplay interactions combined with over 3,500 new animations to give you control over every impact, tackle, collision, for more authentic outcomes. Here are the components of the Hit Everything system. Hit the Pile. Hit the Pile is a physics informed animation selection system built to give players more dynamic animations in multiplayer tackle situations. In every collision with Hit the Pile, key physical factors such as the players involved in the pile and the impact being brought to the pile and are used to determine the proper outcome from a variety of possible outcomes. Gang tackles in Madden 23 will be more organic and unpredictable in how they look and behave but will also offer more control to impact the pile throughout the play. This new system will allow defensive players to seamlessly add on to ongoing tackle interactions at any point whether they be two-man tackles or gang tackles. Hit the pile aims to consistently reward defense for the impact they bring to every pile by allowing players the opportunity to always get involved in those game-changing stops. Now, when you talk about adding 3,500 animations, some people hear that and they say, well, we don't want more animations, but the fact of the matter is you do need animations to make the game. It's more so how they interact with each other and the different outcomes that are available. In past games, you would see more suction tackles or you would see players that could not add on to piles or add on to already existing animations because everything was kind of tethered together. Now, you have more independence of each individual player and from playing the game for a little bit I can tell you that it's definitely an improvement is it perfect no but you can now get a lot more organic outcomes and you get players that feel a little bit more independent of each other and not as if everybody's just tied to the same animation stand up tackles on the back of hit the pile we're adding the stand up tackle feature to create even more moments where a ball carrier can be stood up intentionally to give teammates the opportunity to come in and make a play stand up tackles is a battle mechanic where the ball carrier fights to break a tackle against a defender fighting to secure the tackle with both players mashing the tackle button as quickly as possible to gain an advantage not only is the outcome of the tackle in question but the ball carrier also has a higher chance of fumbling while being stood up so when extra defenders add on to the pile they can lay a hit or strip the ball out and cause a turnover on the offensive side players can hold the protect the ball button to reduce the chance of a fumble while giving up the ability to break the tackle as a last resort ball carriers can even give themselves up at any time and concede the stand-up tackle to completely negate their fumble chances. The size of the ball carrier, defenders, and ratings of the players in the stand-up tackle all factor into who will have the best chance to win these interactions. Those big bruising running backs will have much more easier time winning against smaller defensive backs while a linebacker is more likely to win against a smaller receiving back. Now this particular thing is just the classic EA bringing back an old feature that we used to have. I guess it's slightly different with having some control on offense where you might want to protect the ball or give yourself up, but essentially this is kind of how tackle battles worked in Madden 17 they took it out now it's back in the game I don't think this is really going to make or break the game for anybody it's kind of a little extra thing but it, it's really nothing that important in my opinion not only can you interact in different ways with ongoing tackles, but you can do the same with ongoing blocking interactions too. When in range of a blocking interaction as a defender, the hit stick can be used to run into the block and blow it up with a force to create a pile, get through traffic to get into pursuit of the ball carrier, or get a teammate free. Midair knockouts. Over the last two years, you've seen a significant shift in interactions at the catch 
point. In Madden 21, the interactions were primarily multiplayer catches that had two players both playing the ball instead of a single interaction. In Madden 22, there were far more matchups consisting of single player animations that were independent of each other to offer more control. In Madden 23, FieldSense has unlocked the best of both worlds to create dynamic interactions called mid-airs that both create authentic interactions but also give players the control they desire in those critical catching moments. Players will experience this control and how they attempt to break up passes and each choice leads to different risks and rewards as well as the actual animations that play out. When going for the interception, you'll see all new catch contests that come with a chance for the receiver to break the tackle. If you want to play it a bit more conservatively and go with a SWAT attempt, a defender will try to rip the ball out of the receiver's hands while both players are in the air with the lower chance to break the tackle. And lastly, if you want to simply secure the tackle, choosing the play receiver or hit stick will make the defender not play the ball but attack the receiver instead with a lower chance of knocking the ball out when compared to using SWAT. This is something you'll definitely see more often when playing Madden 23. A lot of these defenders will go for the mid-air knockouts or if they can't really get in position for a mid-air knockout, once the receiver catches the ball, you'll notice them a lot more intelligently go after the ball. They'll try to punch at it or jar the ball loose to force an incomplete pass. That's one area that I feel that they really did upgrade the game this year is that the defense as a whole, as you'll come to know when you get to play it, is a lot smarter this year and they play and do things with purpose more so than ever before. Branching and physics tech. Any collision on the field will now learn on our field sense system to determine if they should branch to a stumble or fall both during the play and after the play is over. For example, if a defender misses a tackle attempt, that player can take out a teammate by tripping him or hitting the ball carrier at a bad angle can force him into a stumble or out of the tackle. You can even knock a teammate off of an ongoing tackle. This system will produce more organic dynamic moments that are reactive to the action on the field, making gameplay less predictable while also offering more control. And again, from playing the game for a little bit, this is true. Again, nothing's perfect. I think there's still areas where they can make this much better. Better, but for the first time maybe ever in Madden or at least in a long time you're gonna see a lot more organic outcomes and you're gonna see a lot of independence of each individual player on the field now we got to talk about skill based passing skill based passing is designed to give you even more control over every pass you throw by combining new passing meters to dictate your power and trajectory on a pass and a new control for pinpoint precision with skill based passing you can now lead receivers open and place the ball where only they can get it you'll have the ability to make back shoulder throws place it into the perfect spot on a corner corner route, hit your receiver for an end zone fade, or drop it over the defense on a streak. Skill based passing will open up your offense in a whole new way. Now there's a lot on the website that goes over skill based passing, but I'm going to do a separate video on this entirely because it's just that in depth and important. But basically now when you try to pass the ball, they're kind of bringing back target passing if you remember that from a few years ago, but it's done so much better this time around and it's a lot easier to use. And a big reason for that is because there's a whole bunch of settings that come along with this that allow you to tailor this whole system to your liking. You have a reticle that you can move over the field and you have kind of a catch radius under your receiver that guarantees the area where he can catch the ball and you can lead the ball within this catch radius however you want however if you take the reticle and you freeform pass it which is taking that reticle a little bit outside of that gray ellipse that's around the receiver you now have this opportunity to put the ball in places where you could not previously throw the ball and while your receiver isn't guaranteed to make a catch if it's outside of his ellipse he has a good chance at making the catch but what you're doing is you're putting the ball where the DB has very little chance to make a play on it. It's high risk, high reward. So for example, those back shoulder fades. Yes, you can even throw proper end zone fades. Finally in Madden, you can put the ball over the top and there's just a lot of situations where your defender might be on you pretty good. You might have just the slightest step on him, but now you can drop the ball perfectly in that bread basket area, right in the bucket if you know how to use this system properly. And with the new settings that come along with this, it makes it a lot harder to mess up, whereas target passing in the past was very easy to mess up. You had to predetermine which receiver you wanted to target pass to in the past. This is more on the fly. You can do it to any receiver on the field at any time. You can adjust the speed of your reticle. You can adjust how far the reticle is allowed to move, which means you can't accidentally put it 20 yards too far outside of the receiver, depending on your settings. So it's much easier to use and it's a lot 
lot more rewarding. However, if you don't like any of the new passing stuff, there's also a setting that allows you to just turn it off and use the classic passing that we've had in Madden for years. And I do think a lot of people might do that because the new passing system will seem a little overwhelming, but when you get used to it, you're not gonna really wanna pass any other way if you give yourself the time to truly learn the new system. Now let's talk about 360 degree cuts, which gives players precise control to trigger harder cuts at any point while running with the ball. Previously, players could only rely on their left stick input to choose between hard cuts or rounded turns. In Madden 23, you now have control to cut when and where you want so your ball carrier can find the lanes as you see them. Hold the left trigger or L2 button when running the ball while changing direction on the left stick to execute a 360 degree cut mechanic. You'll be able to easily cut a run back, cut off a blocker's back and hit the lane, or make a cut into a tight gap. Whether you're a running back, a quarterback on the run, a receiver after the catch, or if you're returning a kickoff or interception, 360 degree cuts offers more total control. I personally thought this mechanic was really good. It pretty much just gives you a really hard plant and then it allows you to make cutbacks really much easier. You know, if you run the ball and you try to hit a hole, this is an area that almost every year they try to address in Madden and they try different things to make this work better. We've seen the one cut mechanic back in Madden 19, but it was kind of unrealistic and it was just kind of janky. This I found was a lot better. You get a hard plant, you don't really get a speed boost out of it, which I think is good, but it just allows you more control when changing direction in the open field. If you want to make a guy miss, you can kind of do a little stutter with it in hard plant and then change direction very quickly. I found that running the ball actually felt really good in Madden 23 and honestly felt easier than passing because when you do get a chance to play the game, you'll see the defense is, is pretty geeked up in Madden 23 this year. So running the ball might actually be what most people opt to do. Wide receiver versus DB battles. Our last set of gameplay mechanics field since delivers is branching wide receiver releases and cuts, defensive back presses and counters, and all new defensive evade mechanics. These mechanics are available in every game mode, but have been created specifically with player locked modes like face of the franchise, the league, and the squads and superstar KO and Madden Ultimate Team in mind. Wide receiver release moves. New foot fire and hop step releases moves are chainable so you can get defenders off balance to beat that press cut. Coverage. Just holding the left trigger or L2 button will start a foot fire with your receiver so you can set up opposing defenders with your next move. The foot fire setup move can be interrupted at any time by transitioning to a hop release or moving the left stick to break into space. Flick the right stick in five different directions allows the receiver to hop from his initial stance. These moves are also chainable so players can flick 90 degrees to the left and follow that up with a flick to 45 degrees to the right to try to get the defender off center. Wide receiver cut moves and fakes. Get total control of new cut moves to fake out defenders in man coverage. A defender in man coverage now has reaction windows that will detect if the defender reacted to the cut in time. If the reaction is late, defenders will stumble, reach out, and visibly show that they have been faked out. DB press and wide receiver counter. Defensive backs have the ability to press and steer receiver left or right, jam the receiver, or stay up on top like in previous years. But in Madden 23, the cornerback mechanics are more dynamic and reactionary instead of a paper, rock, scissors concept. Because of our brand technology, defenders can start a press in one direction, but see the receiver is moving the other way and can quickly branch within a ratings based timing window to counter it. Defensive evade. Evade moves give defenders another tool that helps them get around blockers in the open field. Creating parity with ball carriers, defenders can flick the right stick left to right, side to side, or avoid oncoming blockers or blocking interactions that are in pursuit path of the ball carrier. If you hold the right trigger or the R2 button and flick the right stick left to right, you'll cover more ground in your side step. This mechanic gives you control to anticipate an incoming blocker and avoid him altogether if timed right rather than waiting to get engaged and then having to shed the block in an attempt to tackle. All in all, after playing for a decent amount of time, I think they've made some real strides with the gameplay this year, specifically in passing, tackling, and defensive coverages. I'm going to have tons of videos coming every day to further break down my experiences with the game and cover the news as it comes out, so make sure to subscribe and turn the bell icon on so you don't miss those videos. And check out this video right here from yesterday where I went over some more basic Madden 23 information, including some of the stuff we can expect coming to the game mode.